What is up you guys? It is your boy John here from Boom and Plow. Welcome back to another On The Farm. How's everybody doing? Thanks for clicking on the video. I do appreciate it. Welcome to another warm day here on the farm. It's back to summer here in St. Louis. Unfortunately, it's supposed to be about 95 today with all the humidity and uh, we picked a great day to do an awesome project. So let's get to it. All right, you guys, we're gonna slide into voiceover mode because I basically used the head mount GoPro and did not have good audio because of using the head mount. Um, I don't run the microphone, the external microphone that I have when I have it on the head mount because it's too heavy and it like wants to pull my hat off and stuff. So here we are guys, the big shed at the farm, the center portion, the steep, portion of this shed was built in 1918 and then the additions were added on when dad was younger let me just say that back in high school I believe or maybe younger so first things first guys turning off the electricity that turns off all the power to the farm that is a 200 amp disconnect that kills everything at the farm back in the day with our old electric setup we actually had a transfer box and you could um, basically you could, wow, words are hard. You could, uh, turn off the power by hitting the transfer box. Uh, when we had our power redone, we put it underground, all that stuff. We got rid of the transfer box and, um, decided to put a 200 amp disconnect. The reason we had a transfer box in the first place was there actually used to be double wires that went to the shed and one set of wires ran to a generator. Grandpa had a, a PTO powered generator that he would run off of one of the tractors and he could power the entire farm. Say during corn harvest, they needed to move grain or you know run the blowers on the, the bins. He could do all that from his generator. So we obviously don't have that anymore. He sold it back in 96 at his auction. And um, we have since removed the double wires to this shed. And actually we upgraded the wires that go to this shed. Um, when we tore down the house, we actually took the wires that uh, went to the house and moved them to the shed. Any hoozles. So basically what we're doing here to guys today is fixing the wind damage. The wind, we had a little freak little thunderstorm down at the farm. And I mean, it was a little tiny nothing on radar. It didn't rain here at our house and we're like 12 miles from the farm. But it must have really got with it down at the farm to do this damage. Um, we were down there on a Sunday and this damage wasn't done. We went back down on a Tuesday and hey, there was damage. So it was kind of a whole thing, but it's okay. It's all good. Um, this portion of the tin right here on the roof that I'm working on is actually very new tin relative to the entire building. Um, back in 95, I believe it was, we had a really, really wicked windstorm down here. And it actually took a pretty good sized portion of the roof of this shed. Actually, this portion that we're going to be working on took this portion of the of the roof and blew it about half a mile away and peeled off a bunch of tin off the uh, steep part as well didn't take the wood off the steep part but it did take the tin and honestly the way it's peeling up again <laughs> you know it, all it would take is one good windstorm once that's already loose like this and it would possibly could take the entire well this side of the roof anyway this this half of the roof so we really don't want that to happen obviously so you know like I mentioned in my little intro it was hot as I'll get out that particular day but you know sometimes you just have to do projects even though it's hot you know ideally no we would have waited on this project this would have been a fall time project when it was cooler but you got to get it done before you lose the entire roof of your shed because we don't want to do that obviously so there is that. Um, after 95, when that windstorm hit, it, it was replaced with new lumber on the inside of the shed. And I should, I really should do a little video on that or put that in a video, go inside, show you guys the new lumber that's in there and the old lumber. But um, it ripped off a pretty good portion of the, of the shed, threw it out the lane there. So yeah, got about I guess it's about half a piece of tin wide, maybe not quite half a piece of tin that's actually loose here along this edge. And uh, you know, when you're dealing with stuff that's old, it just happens. I mean, a little bit of rot up there and those screws don't really hold out over time and 
like I said, that star must have really got with it. So, just one of those things that uh, you have to do when you have old, older buildings. It, it's possible. It happens. Um, the center portion of the shed, like I said, was built in 1918. So, if you really start looking too hard at that, it's like you just see so much that's wrong with that part of the building. And it's just like, oh, I don't even want to look, <laughs> you know. But for the most part, the building is in decent shape. It definitely has its issues. So, once upon a time, we had put some aluminum up here on the fascia board. And uh, I guess we didn't nail it down too hot or something, like too good. Like, part of it had to come but down because it was buggered up from the wind you know it, it happens it happens the fascia board is pretty rotten I'm not gonna lie but um, by the end of today we're gonna cover a bunch of it with aluminum and uh, out of sight out of mind right <laughs> um, eventually we do want to cover all the fascia boards on this shed with that white aluminum and we may work on it more this fall I'm not sure um, like I said, it's a good kind of fall wintry project when it's not so darn hot. But basically today's project was fix the storm damage. That's pretty much the goal of this video of this day was to fix it. So what we're going to do, because the problem is there's really not a lot to nail or screw the tin back down to. So we're going to add some lumber here. So. The stringers that go across underneath the roof that all the screws on this side and then the other side is, is nailed down where it didn't rip it off in the storm. That's all screwed down or nailed down to a two by four, laying flat, if that makes sense. Laying on the, on the four inch, not standing up on the two inch. So what we're gonna do here first is we're gonna take a one by four and we're gonna put it up behind the fascia board but underneath the two by four stringers. And then we're going to take a two by three actually you know, you're using a one by three, use the two by three so it all matches up and looks good. And put that on top between the stringers. Therefore, giving you a solid surface to, well, in this case we were using tin screws, not um, nails. A solid surface to screw the tin down to. It's just so much better. So basically scabbing in some wood here to make everything stronger. That was kind of the goal here. I think as we go around the shed, we're going to continue to do this just to uh, drive a few more screws down through the roof to uh, beef it up a little bit, because why not? You know, we do get very severe winds down here. You know, we're in farmland. There's not a lot of wind, uh, wind breaks down there. So especially, well, all times of year. Yes, like a car field will break the wind if you're standing next to it, but the way the wind came was right over a card field towards this building so it's just it gets whipping down there and it's just not good so hence why we're gonna beef up this side of the shed here to uh, help us out the another thing that happened back in 95 during that windstorm it actually ripped the siding off of the old farmhouse on one side and just scattered it <laughs> i mean scattered it out in the front field um it was terrible apparently I don't really remember I don't remember that at all actually I do remember the flood in 93 a little bit but I don't remember the windstorm in 95 there's also a flood in 95 so poor grandpa was pretty busy 95 was actually the last year that grandpa farmed so he was pretty busy that year cleaning up stuff and that probably had something to do with him retiring <laughs> he was just done <laughs> he was just done working on the farm so there is that um, so dad on the ground, he does have what they call an aluminum break. It is a, a machine device thing, whatever you want to call it, that you put that aluminum in and you can cut it and you can bend it, stuff like that. I'll show you guys more of that when we continue to work on the shed. Um, I was the, the guy up in the air, so I didn't deal with the aluminum break at all. Actually, like not even once, I didn't touch it. So. I have no footage of it in use. Um, eventually when uh, we use it again, I will get some footage of it in use and uh, we'll be good to go. I don't know when we're going to continue this project to fix up the shed or kind of beef it up a little bit. Plus put the aluminum on the shed on the uh, fascias. It looks so much better when you put the aluminum on the fascias. 
We did paint the fascia boards uh, a number of years ago. We actually used the man lift that we have right now. This man lift uh, that I'm using comes from where my dad works. They own it and rent it out. Um, it is starting to show its age a little bit and it would be nice if they would replace it, but they're expensive. So I don't know that they're going to replace it, but it does get the job done. Um, it, like I said, it has its issues, but it gets the job done still. And uh, yeah, so you can see that one by four scabbed in behind the fascia board. And uh, got my bucket of fun here with some screws and hammer and all the, all sorts of different tools I had with me up in the lift because it's easier just to take tools with you instead of having to like yell down, hey, give me this tool. I got to come down so I can get it. Or you throw it at me and I probably miss it and drop it. It's a whole thing, right? So there's that. Uh, working upside down on this facial board was not exactly the most fun thing I've ever done. <laughs> but, uh, you know... We got the job done. There, you can see that 2x4 stringer across there. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Honestly, between the 1x3 and the 2x3 that we snuck in, and luckily because the tin was all loose, we were able to sneak the 2x3 in from the top side, and it just made life a lot easier. Um, but it really did beef up the edge of the tin, basically. And that's exactly what we were after, was beefing up the edge of the tin so that the wind cannot catch it again and send it flying because we don't want that we don't want that we like our roof to be on the shed not laying in a field <laughs> you know how how selfish of us for uh, wanting our roof to stay on our building how selfish but anyway <laughs> so the worst part i would say of doing this whole project is how much time it takes to get the man lift adjusted i'm just quote driving the man lift from up in the basket it would be cool if the controls were on the other side they'd be in your way but instead of having to like turn around all the time it would be kind of nice if they were just like right there and you could control it but it works out i guess it works out and i will address that no i'm not wearing a safety harness and yes i should be however uh, I'm actually quite experienced in this man lift and I'm not going to do anything that jeopardizes my safety and so I feel like I don't need it but that's just me I don't know um, do as I do as I say not as I do you guys should wear a safety harness if you're in the lift probably so there goes the two by three on the top side and you can see we're just filling that in and then I'm gonna screw it through the fascia board into the two by three and then I actually ran screws from the underside from the one by four into the two by three but therefore like really locking it down you know it couldn't go anywhere because let's be honest there's spots of this fascia board that there's just like nothing left but it it'll live it'll it'll live to see another day basically actually it won't see any more days because it's getting covered by aluminum so <laughs> no big deal right no big deal but um yeah, I'm going to go ahead and drive a bunch of screws in this thing, like four through the fascia board per section. And then I think I did three or four from the bottom side too, because I wanted this, wanted this to be very strong. That was kind of my goal here. Let's beef it up. Got to drive a few nails back in. Of course, fascia board was moved out from the building a little bit just due to vibration and whatnot over the years. It happens. Nails tend to loosen up. That's why I like screws so much more. Another one by or two by four, two by three, not two by four, not a one by four, two by three going in and uh, going to be put into place as well. And then here you go. You can see this is actually going into the stringer through the one by four into the stringer. Going to go ahead and screw this in as well. And uh, like I said, it really beefed it up, made it so much stronger. Um, I'm assuming when we go around the shed, keep going around the shed, we'll do the same kind of concept here. The only part that sucks is we won't be able to get it at it from the top side. So we won't be able to put as many screws in it. And we may have to do some assembly on the ground to actually make this all work. But we will figure it out. We will figure it out. And uh, just making it so much stronger. The most important piece was probably that little piece of 2x3 I just put in there. Because it's right on the corner. Beefing it up just a little bit more. And... You guys can see electric lines here. Don't worry, they were turned off 
all the power at the farm, like I showed earlier in the video, was turned off. Uh, which made for an interesting day because anytime Dad would have to cut a board, uh, he would go turn the power on. Basically, I'd move the lift away first from the power lines, and then he would turn the power back on. Next time we do this, we're going to do a little bit of prep work. And, well, actually, next time we won't have to work around the electric lines, so we won't have to unplug them. But what we should have done was fired up the generator because we do have a generator at the farm. It's not a PTO powered, like I was saying before, but it's, you know, regular old generator. We should have hooked that sucker up first and plugged in the miter saw to that. So dad didn't have to, you know, go turn the power on, block in the shed, cut a board, turn the power off, hand the board to me. I'd move back in place. It honestly became kind of a process. And that's why there's not more footage for this video. First off, it was really, really hot and we were both getting kind of angry. <laughs> and so it got to the point where I just put the camera down and I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of just done filming. So there could potentially be like hours more footage, but uh, I think you guys get the point of what we're getting at here and basically what we're going to do. Adding the one by three first, scabbing in the two by three on top and filling that gap basically so that we have new good wood to screw the tin down to to really glue that edge down um, like i said we did put aluminum up on the fascia as well i don't have any footage of that because it got to the point in the day where it was just i was done i was done filming so this was also a day i i was very sick <laughs> very sick uh this day as well and just did not feel good so I just didn't feel like filming to be completely honest with everybody so um, yeah like I said when we continue this uh, work on the shed probably this fall if we get to it I would I would say we might try to chalk it up and do it this fall because it is something we need to get done we need to put the aluminum on the fascia boards to protect them and stop them from rotting because then they won't get wet all the time and uh, stuff like that so we need to do some more work to this shed, and of course, we'll bring it to you guys in a video. But, uh, yeah, it's, it was a whole thing. Um, did I mention it was like 90 plus degrees this day, 95, 96, something where in there? Very, very hot, very uncomfortable, very miserable. <laughs> Just saying. It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal down there. Um, hence why I said we're going to possibly continue to work on this project, but in the fall not so much in the hot summer anymore you know you do things because you have to you put projects on the back burner because you can kind of thing so there is that and you can see yes I'm I keep leaning over and talking to dad because we were trying to figure this out and it was getting a little bit complicated but we made it work so basically guys after this clip there's only one more little clip that I filmed but I did Put aluminum across the fascia boards nailed that in with a little aluminum nails they're kind of a pain but you know we made it work and then I was oh I did also go up the peak a little bit just to get past the wires to get to the loose tin up there as well so that's all fixed up as well um, did screw the tin down with quite a few screws as well because you know why not um, and at that point when I was actually screwing the roof back down um, the man lift kind of had a little malfunction and I got stuck in the air for about 15 minutes, but uh, you know, it's all good <laughs> Just another reason I was like no more camera. I'm done So basically guys, that's the end of the footage for this video I know it's kind of an incomplete thing, but here in a second you'll see it's kind of all buttoned up You can see it's all buttoned up all the aluminum goes up the to the steep part up uh, about halfway on the steep part and with that guys I'm gonna say thank you guys so much for watching another on the farm I will continue to film as we work on this shed in the future, probably not to this fall. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and as always, toodles.